been a real concern that the impact of digital innovation on our cultural heritage institutions puts them at the risk of becoming superfluous. Brown and Waterhouse Watson also consider the implications of digital technology and ask, does the integration of digital media into the museum marginalise the power or importance of traditional exhibits or even make them redundant? Black sees this as a distinct possibility and voices his concerns, finding that the web could be seen as a preeminent challenge to the role of museums in contemporary society. Its existence is a direct threat to the positions museums hold as gatekeepers to and interpreters of cultural memory of mankind. This need not be the case. Handled correctly, digital technology can not only be a valuable addition to a museum or gallery visit, but also an important way of encouraging new visitors to physically experience what our cultural heritage institutions have to offer. Black acknowledges this and notes society is changing much faster than museums are and must accept the need for rapid change in museums ethos and practice in order to respond to the 21st century demands. Heath and Bonlean support this and note interactivity is seen as an important resource in enhancing interpretation and creating new forms of engagement with museums and collections. However, there is a balance to be struck with the old and the new. While it is imperative that cultural institutions attract new visitors and supporters, it must not alienate its existing patrons. Brown and Waterhouse Watson predict conflict and note, tensions arise between the desire or pressure to retain traditional modes of representation and the perceived need to draw on emerging innovations to maintain relevance in a world driven by technology. It is an expectation that museums and galleries have a comprehensive website but they are often used as an aid in planning a visit, to check opening hours and plan what to see on a visit so you don't miss things that are of particular interest to you. Monica Hagedorn Sauper of Europeana agrees that online tours will not replace the traditional trip to the museum. She uses the example of the Mona Lisa, explaining that everyone knew what the Mona Lisa looked like before the digital age, from books, magazines and documentaries. However, this does not stop people from visiting the museum in person to see it. Hagedorn Sauper says it compelled people to see the physical object and feel its essence. So digital resources don't replace museum visits, they raise awareness. Digital innovation can provide cultural heritage institutions with a wonderful opportunity to engage and interact with people from all different ages, from all different backgrounds. Ryan Dodge of the Royal Ontario Museum supports this and notes, Today, the first place you have to capture someone's imagination is online. He feels that a really positive online interaction can be a transformative experience and just as valuable as a physical ticket purchase. He maintains that a great digital experience will assist museums remain relevant into the future. So using the internet can be a great tool for museums to use to reach a wider audience and a proportion of these people will not have been traditional museum goers. This provides museums with a valuable opportunity to engage new potential visitors and send them an important message. Christine Conciatori from the Canadian Museum of Human Rights agrees, but states that the pressure on museums to attract both new virtual and physical visitors can lead to the introduction of digital platforms that are empty and devoid of substance. So new technologies must be used wisely or risk being merely a gimmick that will not provide a lasting long-term enhancement to either the physical or virtual visitor. There are concerns also that the race to digitalize can ruin the purity and simplicity of admiring an artwork and detract from the almost mystical aura that has lured visitors to museums and galleries for decades with too much information and gadgetry. Kaylin Feldman of the Minneapolis Institute of Arts agrees and states that cultural institutions will retain their relevance in the digital age because they provide an important respite from our often isolated digital and virtual lives. She adds that in a world where anything can be faked, the need to experience the real thing will only become greater. Digital technology can also enable people to view items in the museum's collections that are not currently on display. Lack of space means that many items in a museum's collection are not able to be displayed. 
Also, some items need to be kept in climate controlled spaces and away from harsh artificial lighting to prevent damage and deterioration. Digital technology allows these fragile and rarely seen artifacts to be viewed in digital displays at the museum and online. While the internet allows us to gain global virtual admittance to many cultural heritage museums that only a few of us will have the privilege of visiting physically, there are many that feel the digital experience will never be a legitimate substitute for the real thing. Mark Van Horst from Europeana supports this and says, nothing can compare or recreate the feeling of standing in front of a four by three meter painting in a museum or gallery. The sheer size and magnitude of some exhibits simply cannot be replicated on the internet. An art experience in real life can stay with you forever and be very powerful and emotive. Digital innovation won't place our cultural heritage institutions at risk of redundancy. Used wisely and sympathetically, it can assist in attracting new visitors while retaining the old traditional ones. Heath and Von Leem support this and note, interactivity can create exciting, challenging, innovative exhibitions that not only support interaction, but also form the foundation to engagement and learning. Digital innovation won't threaten our museum's future to remain relevant. It will enhance the experience and attract a new audience.